It's extremely grueling. We always say that we're, we stretch you to the point where we can see all your, your holes. The Joint Readiness Training Center rotation is like a cricket uh, bat in the face over and over again. What's up, right? I'm Sean Grescheck, and I'm joining the Welsh Cavalry as they spend 12 days in what's known as the Box, a feared training area that's been used to test troops to their limits for decades. Meet Geronimo. I think we are uh, considered the most hated unit in the United States Army. And I think our soldiers uh, really take a lot of pride in being the most despised unit that's out there. Geronimo. So I have, uh, I have a lot of respect for Geronimo. I'm fighting somebody that has a ton of repetitions fighting here in this terrain uh, that is gonna absolutely give us uh, every problem that we will likely encounter in combat. They are effectively professional baddies. They're based at this training area and know every inch of it like the backs of their hands. Their mission is to give the visiting soldiers hell. At the heart and soul of that is, act in a way today that will force your adversary or your opponent to really have to deal with a lot of problems simultaneously. And when you do that, you overwhelm them and they start to create their own problems. And I think that is really what's at the heart of um, how we act and, and our mentality. As usual, no prisoners. Come Questions? On. Only three, oh, my guys push through. One dead G-man down the road. And it doesn't take long for Geronimo to start causing problems. This, the aftermath of a surprise attack. Genesis, he got radio tech before we switched them. So, get guns oh! facing that way, push these guys across the road, and then you can bring those guys in. Back. Within my battalion, there are about 627 soldiers assigned. For rotation, I also receive about an additional 400 augmentee soldiers who just arrived just for the purpose of helping out for one month and then they leave. In comparison, typically there are about 5,000 soldiers on average that will come here to train against us and, and fight us. So in terms of like overmatch, uh, certainly we are the underdog, but that also plays into our favor in terms of um, why we're so hated is because we like playing as, as the guy who's operating against all odds. Say so during the day we do weapons maintenance and kind of rest because we mainly fight at night. So during the daytime, we'll tend to do probe attacks sometimes, like make sure they're how their defenses are, their security. And then nighttime is normally when we hit them hard. If you could sneak up on somebody when they're sleeping and you kill them, you just tell them, go back to, go back go to back bed. To sleep. It's like one of the third, it's like, okay, and roll yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, just keep alert, like, <laughs> all right, I'm dead, and then just go back to sleep. The enemy that we're up against, this is their full-time job. So they do this day in and day out. And uh, it's gonna be a, a pretty big hassle for us. They also have off-the-shelf drones that they utilize to locate and target um, and they have nerf droplets that they drop to simulate grenades so it's completely uh, real world uh, and um, working to create the best way to strike the enemy um, but using new technology. Our goal is we must win. And the reason we must win as the opposing force is that we believe very firmly that units learn best by losing. So you, you've got a real kit of parts, haven't you? Anything at your disposal to make life hell for... Yeah, and these vehicles are all brand new. Um, so one of the things that will kind of change about these is right now they just look like a, a, a plain pickup truck, but uh, we, we also will mount uh, police lights on them, ambulance lights, the orange flashing like construction worker or uh, electric company. And, and so we can go out there and pretend to just be fixing a light pole um, and doing nothing, but we're actually utilizing that as an opportunity to maybe infiltrate uh, a Wi-Fi network or just observe and report on activity that's in that area. His job is to train this brigade uh, and train us as hard as he can uh, by See, he's already got his scouts out against me. 
So why is the enemy here called Geronimo? Their lineage goes back to the 509th Parachute Infantry Battalion, and uh, by legend, uh, one of the first members of the 509th was one of the, also the first members of the test platoon. The rest of the members of his unit had, you know, s said that he was going to be scared. And so he said, I'm not going to be scared when I exit this airplane for the first time, one of the first U.S. paratroopers, and I'm going to prove it to you by yelling Geronimo when I jump out of the airplane, right? And so Geronimo being the, the very famous uh, Apache warrior uh, from Native American culture. And so, true to his word, when he exited the aircraft, he yelled, Geronimo. So what we're going to do, sir, just blow it off to that. Meanwhile, Geronimo have now made contact with the Welsh cavalry. You can get one of the antennas up, get under zero. Okay. Tell him to stop dropping people in that area. Right. Because obviously the enemies have got eyes on to the calling mortars in. The beginning of many battles ahead. We've got lots of training areas in the UK, some of which um, initially could look quite similar to this, pine trees and ferns but then they're very small. This is on a scale that is really great to work in because uh, in, in the UK, you'll come across the same wood block or the same trees again and again. And when you've been on that training area a bit, you kind of know where the enemy are likely to be hiding and uh, there aren't that many surprises. But in somewhere the size of this, uh, we're constantly being surprised by Geronimo, uh, discovering new areas and um, getting pushed and uh, put to the test uh, in a way that we just wouldn't be used to at home. And what's it like having the Welsh Cavalry uh, working alongside you? So first and foremost, a phenomenal unit, incredibly professional, particularly their junior non-commissioned officers, their corporals and lance corporals, incredibly capable and professional and skilled at what they do. So this time the British are here, you know, do, do, they, do they tend to give you more grief than, than the others? Honestly, no, because we may talk a lot of smack about each other, but when it comes down to it, when we finally actually train with each other, we look forward to it and learn from one another. This isn't the Super Bowl. This isn't the end point. Sorry, that would be like the uh, Champions League Cup. Um, this isn't the, the end. This is just a point on our way to being ready. And ultimately, you know, we hope we don't have to, to compete in that really uh, final event, com real combat. And so this is meant to push us uh, really beyond our limits uh, to prepare us for that eventuality. What's your message to the Welsh Cavalry? I have no message for the Welsh Cavalry. I'll be there to shoot you soon. Next time, come with me as I explore the history behind Fort Polk in Louisiana. The state has been home to training US soldiers since before World War II. And a big exclusive with the head of Forces Command, four-star General Garrett, talks about the importance of the defense relationship between the United States and the UK. Sean Grezchek, Forces News, Fort Polk, Louisiana. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.